Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to today's video where we're discussing another anime. All right, yes indeed. Today, we're talking about The Detective is Already Dead. As the name implies, it's a sort of mystery detective show. But I have mixed feelings about it. Now, I gotta say, right off the bat, it probably has one of the best waifus of the season, Siesta, the uh, the blue or not blue, the white hair, blue eyed girl. That, or that's uh, the biggest of them. She's the detective. And when it says she's already dead, well, it's interesting. So it starts out with you know her not being dead, and then uh, she's like basically said like in the first episode. Uh, the main character, Kimi the guy, uh, he's, his name is like Kimihiko uh, Kimizuka, which I'm just going to call him Kimi from now on, just to save syllables. Uh, he says at the end of the first episode, but she's already dead, or the detective's already dead, or something like that to that extent. Um, and which I was skeptical at first, because I was like, is she going to be? I doubt it, you know, whatever. Uh, but then the next episode, yeah, no, she's like gone. He's like miserable. Um, everything kind of like that. And then, you know, he meets people, stuff happens. Yeah, they have the whole shebang. Um, and then they have like flashbacks of like her and him together, which honestly, I would have just loved, like, it, I would love if they would make like a, a a prequel to this, where it was just Kimi and um, Siesta going around doing detective work. Uh, because honestly, the dynamic between the two of them was great. The, the episodes where the two of them were in uh, and, like, interacting with each other were perfect. They were great, and I enjoyed them a lot. The episodes where they were not involved were a lot less entertaining, at least to me. Maybe it's just because Siesta's great. Uh, white hair is great, and I have a thing for it. One of the hair colors that I have a thing for being pink and blonde, the other ones. But anyway, <clears throat> her whole dynamic is, is great. Uh, and that's that's cool. But the, the story, I, I don't... It's interesting. Because halfway through, they drop a couple, like, hints for what's going on. And it's very obvious if you pay attention. You're like, oh, that's who that is. Um, classic, you know, detective stuff. You know, dropping those little hints here and there. Like, you know, the the, the classic detective hints of, like... If you're if you're watching a detective show, the goal of the show should be to where you can solve the mystery yourself with the clues that are given to you. And in this one, the overarching mystery of, I suppose it would be how the detective dies or is dead or that kind of stuff, um, they allude to it a little bit beforehand. And if you pay attention before it's revealed, and you compare characters and all this stuff, you can tell what's going on. Like, if you compare notes about everything that you know, and, like, actually focus on stuff and not just kind of, like, ignore the broader picture of what's going on, you'll realize that some shit is going to go down before it happens. Um, and you'll realize, oh, that makes perfect sense. Because there's multiple hints throughout the series before the, uh, the reveal of how she died um, occurs. And it's like, oh. And when it happens, it's like, Huh. I thought, huh. But she, huh. And then it's like, oh, after it's revealed a little bit later. Oh, man. It, it, it's interesting. Um, the plot's okay, but I feel like when it's not Siesta and Kimi together, when it's the other characters who are uh, uh, Nagisa and Yui, which Yui comes in a little bit later, Nagisa kind of is like, uh, she's the first person to ask Kimi for help after Siesta dies, and then she... Uh, being Nagisa, she ends up becoming uh, a detective in her place because Kimi can only be a sidekick or something. It's weird. Um, but anyway, it was interesting um, because the ones without Siesta, uh, at first it, like, it felt like things were just kind of really tame. They really dragged on. They weren't really that exciting. Um, even like some of the more exciting parts of them were just like, it's not really detective work. This is more like, you know, something completely different. 
You know, it didn't feel like really detective-y to me. It felt, I don't know, not detective work, <laughs> you know. But uh, then again, nothing that, um, that Siesta and him related either felt like detective work. I mean, it, it's complicated. It, it's very complicated. It doesn't seem like they're actually detectives. It's more like they're uh, not superheroes, but like people who like are like military or like police kind of is what it feels like almost i don't know it's kind of hard to explain without having to, how you watching it uh but anyway the whole dynamic is what the hell happened to siesta in my opinion uh more or less it's, it's actually about like the detective's dead so here's kimi and how he's coping with it and how he's going to go about the rest of his life from now on um is essentially what it boils down to um and all that but, man, I just really wanted to see more of Siesta, like, all the time. Like, her design, just on point. And, like, everything she did, just on point. Beautiful and great. And, honestly, if I had to think of, like, any characters from, like, this season of anime that I'm like, yeah, that was, like, a it's really cool character design, and I really liked them. They were, like, a very enjoyable character to, uh, like, you know, watch and see stuff about. Um, I can really only think of Siesta. Everyone else is kind of generic or, like, doesn't get enough screen time or there's, like, not enough, like, about them to, like, care. Even the other, like, uh, show that has, like, a female, like, lead, which is, like, Peach Boy Riverside, Sally. Sally just felt bland. She had a very simple character design, just like a... Uh, a bowl cut blonde hair kind of thing going on, which uh, Siesta has like a, a basic bob cut kind of thing going on, but she has like the hair accessories uh, with like the little black stuff and all that. And her hair's white, which is, you know, striking and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I can't really think of any other good like female characters this season other than, I mean, you can say like that, uh, the one we already talked about, which was the, um, Mother of the Goddesses dormitory that had all the, the cute girls, but I can barely remember any of their names already. Uh, there was also, uh, there is also the other show that we'll be talking about later, which I think comes up this week as the last episode, um, which it's the Isaikai one where uh, the kid's ugly and uh, he gets sent to the monster portion of the planet and stuff like that. That has some good, like, waifus in it, like Miu and T Tomoka? It starts with a T, I think her name does. But they're kind of cool. But all in all, none of them compare to Siesta's just brilliance. Okay, I've rambled for like half this damn thing about Siesta being great. Uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, the show as a whole wasn't that great, to be honest. Um, even if there was a second season, which it didn't seem like one was going to be uh, a second season. Um, I didn't really... I think I'd watch a second season of it anyway. Because um, it just, I don't know. If Siesta's not in it, I don't want to watch it. So I'll just do it. Yeah. Um, there was one, like, special, like, cameo of uh, Hollow Live. Uh, they had, I think it's Matsuri and uh, it was uh, the, the Wolf Girl, Fubuki? I think her name is Fubu, Fubuki, yeah, Fubuki and uh, Matsuri. Uh, those two, in one of the first episodes, are on like this uh, TV on like a building, and they're discussing an idol, and uh, the idol is one of the characters in the show. So it, it's interesting that they got VTubers, well, the actual like VTubers themselves doing it, because uh, those are their voices. Uh, it, it was interesting seeing VTubers in an anime, I suppose. Um, but they only made that one appearance and there was nothing. So it was kind of weird seeing that, uh, occur. So I out there. Just, uh, just a little interesting tidbit for you there. Uh, but anyway, yeah, check it out if it seems up your alley. Uh, it's got some okay action stuff. For the most part, it seems like it's just them walking around and, like, solving stuff and, like, deterring, detecting, you know. You know, classic detective stuff isn't really combat-oriented, but there is combat scenes in it. Uh, yeah, so... That's all I uh, I got for you. 
yeah, so Siesta's uh, number one waifu this, this uh, season, so oh, yeah. All right, moving on. Next time, we'll be talking about another show, so look forward to that. Until then, everyone, bye for now.